Welcome to the Mamas of Fit YouTube channel. In this video, Casey's gonna be walking you through a postpartum yoga flow that is great to begin to do when you're several weeks or maybe a few months postpartum to introduce a lot of different types of movements. This yoga flow is gonna help you walk through some rhythmic movement to help integrate movement again in the early weeks and months after giving birth. Hi, welcome to Mama Stay Fit On Demand Yoga. I'm Casey Backus, physical therapist and yoga instructor, and I've got Roxanne here with me today. Um, a little bit more rhythmic flow here, not super long, um, but a goal of kind of finding the rhythm of breath and letting that weave together with movement. That being said, you could stop at any time. You can pause for an extra breath. You can pause the video, um, go slower than I'm cueing. It won't be anything too fast or crazy, but uh, we will tap into rhythm, which I think innately taps into connection with the body. And so sometimes um, we feel a little disconnected in the postpartum, and it can be really nice to find some semblance of rhythm. Um, we're going to start in tabletop, so all fours right away. And so kind of a bit of two for one. We're going to kind of center here. And so just spread the fingers, kind of wiggle the toes. Notice how you feel um, coming to all fours. Doesn't matter if you have yoga clothes on, doesn't matter anything. Let's just move together and kind of move some energy. And so as you inhale, let the belly dip low. The gaze can lift, the tailbone can lift. And then exhale, huge exhale, round the spine high. Good, and then keep going through those. Inhale, lets the belly dip low. You don't have to really exploit how far it's going, but exhale's a big round spine high. Good, we've got two more. Big inhale. Pause here. You're gonna think about an audible exhale, so like a movement. Good, last one even a little different. It's gonna be audible, but through the nose exhale, so it's still that feeling, but your lips are closed. Good. Come back through center. Good. From here, drop down onto the left elbow. We're just adding a little bit of rotation. Good. From here, we'll take cat-cow. So it's a little bit of asymmetrical, doing something different with one side of body than the other, which is actually really healthy for us. Really good to kind of move around. Good. and then just swap. You'll notice one side's a little stickier. So all of the yoga practice is coming to know your body, coming to get a little bit more acquainted with what your body is feeling like today. So instead of making big sweeping generalizations about how our body can move, we just kind of go, oh, that's interesting. Like this is a little sticky today, or I feel strong today, or maybe I don't feel as strong. Good, head it out to downward facing dog from our all fours. You'll walk the hands forward just a hand print or so and then take the hips back. Bit of an upside down V, there's room for movement here. And so yoga is not for photography or, you know, a perfect shape. And so let it have some fluidity to it. Good, hands walk back toward the feet. We'll meet at the back of the mat if you're using a mat or wherever you are. Let the breath come out all the way, big exhale. On the inhale, come to stand all the way up. Arms can go wide and high, gather breath, palms touch. Good, as you exhale, all the way back down. So we'll take a few rounds of that. As you inhale, it's just a halfway lift. Hands come to shins, nice long spine, exhale, fold. Good, big inhale to stand. So it's about one breath to each movement. The exhale forward, fold all the way back down. Good, inhale halfway, lift long spine, lengthens, exhale to fold. Good, big inhale to rise up. Exhale all the way back down, last round. In breath, halfway lift. Let it out, exhale, fold. Good, big inhale to stand, palms touch. And then exhale all the way back down. Good, just an easy halfway lift here. We're gonna find our way forward to plank like an upper push-up. 
Good. And then knees come down first. And then you'll lower the chest all the way down. Good. Bring the forehead down here. Pause a little bit. Toes untuck. Good. Shoulders are going to roll back. So we might have a tendency for our fronts of the shoulders to be touching toward the floor. Can you just demo that real quick? Good. So first part, shoulders are going to roll back away from the floor. Nice long neck. Good. And then you're going to lift the head by thinking, pull the throat back. Good. Big inhale. And we've got a few more of those. Exhale, lower down. So it's just where we're initiating the movement from. Throat goes back. Exhale, lower down. Good. Maybe roll the shoulders back one more time. Big inhale. This is cobra or baby cobra. A little bit of movement side to side at the top. Good. As you lower down, take the hands wide. You'll kind of tent them. Um, and the elbows will spin high. Again, big squeeze of the shoulder blades. You'll feel the chest open. You've been baby holding, baby feeding. And this is the pose. Just breathe here. Good. Maybe roll the right shoulder blade back even more. And then the left shoulder back even. Good. Hands come by the rib cage. Big press up all fours. Take the hips to the heels. Child's pose and let it go. If the forehead doesn't come down with ease, feel free to just grab a couch pillow, a block whatever you have available, a blanket, a beach towel, works really nicely. Good, from here, walk the hands over toward the right side of the mat or just toward your right. Good, let that right hand slide back by the feet. So we're focusing on this left side length. Imagine you could breathe only into your left rib cage, left side body, full breath. Stay, but exhale, relax the neck. Good. Unwind it over to the left. Same thing. Left side hands walk over to the left side. Left hand reaches down toward the feet. And all of our effort into that right side rib cage, right low back. Big breath in. And exhale, soften the neck, soften the jaw. Teeth are together lightly in the back. So those molars are together, but the tongue is in the roof of the mouth and there is an ease about it. The breath flows in through the nose and then unwind, finding our way back to downward facing dog. So hips pull up, take it back, take a few breaths to just kind of reset. Notice the distribution from right side to left side. If you're feeling too much weight in the hands, always an option to take the hands to blocks. Roxanne, I'm gonna give you blocks just to demo that real quick. And so that changes our relationship with gravity some. As long as your blocks aren't gonna slide, this gives her a little bit less pressure in the wrists and a little bit of shift back toward the feet. Great prenatal, prenatal modification too. We're gonna stay on the blocks for the first round. And so from here, you're just gonna step the right foot forward toward the right wrist, good. Stay low in this lunge, the uh, left hand will stay down, the right arm's gonna open for a twist. And this first one, just move around a little bit, you can bend and straighten the front leg, you can look up and down. Kind of notice that it's never just one body part moving, that everything's pretty connected here. And then the right hand comes down, step it back downward facing dog. Keeping the blocks under the hands if you're using them. Inhale forward to plank or upper push up. Knees can come down and then you'll lower the chest in between. Stay here, forehead comes down, big squeeze of the shoulder blades. Let's get that chest opening. Yep, Cobra's fine, yep. Come on down. Really working the fronts of the shoulders back. You're gonna feel a lot of stickiness from these kind of positions of care. One more big breath in, cobra. And then exhale, lower down, curl the toes. You can press up onto all fours and find your way back downward facing dog, so. We'll take the left side, left foot takes a big step forward, coming right into that twist. Right hand stays anchored, left arm opens, and then all the movement that you want. Move in a way that you were curious about what would reaching do, what would looking down do. 
And so we're not trying to stick a shape or perfect a pose. Swiggle the toes if there's any kind of white knuckling there. Good. Right back to downward facing dog. Good. You can just take a few breaths here or you could take that vinyasa type flow, which was the high plank inhale. Lower to the belly. Exhale, option to drop to knees there. Cobra inhale. And then exhale, lower down, maybe press up all fours, curl the toes, we're headed back, downward facing dog. So lots of options along the way to customize. Okay. Big inhale, take the right leg high. Good, exhale, big step forward to lunge. We're gonna add the twist right here, right arm goes high. And then as you exhale, right hand comes down to the mat. Squeeze the inner thighs together and then come right up the center, high lunge. Good, for this first round, hands to prayer. And bring the rib cage down and the front hip points up. Good. Pause just to feel. Hands will go high, keep the ribs coming down though. The exhale is warrior two. The back heel will spin down kind of parallel with that back edge of the mat. Front knee tracking forward towards second and third toe. And then instead of sinking in, we're thinking kind of drawing energy up the legs. So wiggle the toes, root into the feet. Good. Front palm will flip over. You're gonna trace the ceiling back. Front knee can straighten here, reverse triangle. And then lifting that front pelvis up off the front of the leg. Good, finishing the way that we started, coming back to that lunge twist. Hands windmill all the way back down to the mat. Nice. Good, for three, two. Little different here, right hand comes down. Yep, walk the hands over toward your left for wide leg forward fold. Good, I'm gonna see you do your blocks here. And then just some movement. Toes a little wider than the heels. Let the head be heavy. And so noticing what the inner thighs are experiencing here. Oftentimes when our breath and our pelvic floor aren't fully in sync, the inner thighs kind of jump in and say like, we'll help, um, which can make them a little cranky. Sometimes they're still sore from our birth experience. And so we're just really investigating. Nice, a little bit of a funky transition here. You're gonna keep walking your hands toward the back of the mat. And right away, you're in that left side lunge. You might have to wiggle back, Roxanne. <laughs> Good, twist right away, left arm goes high. Good. And the left hand comes down. Here's that big squeeze of the inner thighs right up the center for high lunge. Good. Hands to prayer, thinking front hip points pulling up, front ribs kind of knitting down. Good. Easy breath in. Drawing everything toward the midline. Inhale, hands go high again, and then out to warrior two. Back heel spins down. Those left toes still point straight forward. Could wiggle the toes. You're pressing through kind of that outer edge of the foot. Front palm flips, surf back. Front leg can straighten. Keep lifting the pelvis off the front thigh. For three, big reach. Two, hands windmill down into the mat for a low lunge twist. Swivel back high on the back toes. Nice for three. Two, left hand comes down. You'll walk back toward the side of the mat. Walks with you. This time toes turn out a little bit more. We'll take a little bit more of a side lunge kind of back and forth. Maybe even a little more depth here. So sometimes called skandasana. Uh, fitness calls it Cossack squat. And the depth really isn't the important part, but just kind of noticing the mechanics all the way down the legs. What are the ankles willing to do? Do the ankles want to stay down when you bend the knee? And then making sure any tension is not creeping up into our head and neck. Nice, keep heading back toward the top of the mat. We will find our way back to downward facing dog. 
breathing in down dog or you could take that vinyasa, nice choice. Good, closing out with a pigeon here. That right knee's gonna slide forward behind the right wrist and the foot will come across. Front shin doesn't really have to be parallel, so you're just kind of settling in. And then we'll notice what kind of space that we have underneath the back hip. We can slide a block under the right hip. You can also use a block in front of the left hip, kind of like a ramp between the front thigh. That one might be too big, but I kind of like it still. Good, and then coming down onto forearms, just checking in. You probably notice that you rolled onto the big toe side of this extended back leg. Press down through the pinky toe as you roll, so weight onto the block. Gotcha. Good. Front thigh wrapping open. And so just noticing if there is a lot of resistance or like a high amount of intensity, so much that it's taking your breath away, we're gonna move out to a softer variation into a 90-90. And so you can stay with traditional pigeon, but here is an option. So you'll kind of roll onto the right hip, slide the back knee up some, um, keep that one, yeah, there you go. And then the torso will just come forward toward this front thigh. Target sensation will be in the right glute or that right backside of the hip as we regain our stability of the core, oftentimes we can be clenching our glutes as a substitute um, for stability. And so just kind of breathing into the back pocket of the right hip, softening the shoulders, the jaw, tongue back to the roof of the mouth, kind of resetting. And don't be surprised if you have to do this kind of all day long. Just check in, reset. Oh, I found myself clenching my jaw, clenching my inner thighs, clenching my glutes. Soften and reset. Even soften the arches of the feet, wiggle the toes some. If there are noises in your space or sound, see if you can just allow those to become part of your practice. Okay. And so to come out of this, we're just gonna come back up and then Roxanne will take her knees through center and we'll just kind of flop over into 90-90 toward the back of the mat. If you are taking a traditional pigeon, um, just feel free to adjust that left leg forward and right leg back. And then again, torso toward that front thigh. Target sensation in any pigeon variation is going to be in that back pocket, the left back pocket. And so we're slow and steady with our healing, with our reconnection to the body. One of the biggest, most impactful things we can do in the early days of healing is to acknowledge that even a little bit of a reset um, is helpful to the brain, it's helpful to our nervous system, helpful to our body connection, kind of our self-esteem, finding our way forward into our new normal Sometimes we can feel a little emotional when we do a pose like pigeon or we actually just come to stillness. Um, the learning curve of having a new baby is very steep. It takes a lot out of us. Good, one more breath just to be. And from here, we'll kind of come back up and we'll just slide onto the back. And finish with a Shavasana or a resting pose. I'm going to slide this bolster underneath your knees. Feel free to throw the legs up onto a couch or an ottoman. Yeah, watch the claw clip. <laughs> and so Shavasana um, or corpse pose is the pose of complete letting go. And this can be arguably the most challenging pose in our yoga practice. And then... So just start to wiggle around, take some movement, invite yourself to kind of wiggle into it instead of just trying to be perfectly still. And then notice how much of the back of your rib cage is on the mat. If you're just feeling kind of your shoulders, 
um, but the whole mid back is lifted, we might even take a pillow under the head. See if we can get the ribs down a little bit more. And then dropping into rest, we'd invite you to stay at rest for three minutes or even a minute, um, as long as 10 or 15 minutes or take a nap if you can, um, as the body starts to unwind. But we'll go ahead and end the video formally here and feel free to stay at rest as long as your schedule allows. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us for this mindfulness exercise. We hope that it helps you kind of bring you down a little bit to help tune in to how you're feeling within your body and to help activate more of that parasympathetic nervous system. If you enjoyed this mindfulness practice, be sure to check out our online pre and postnatal yoga on demand classes. With our on demand classes, they're pre recorded videos that range from five minutes to 30 minutes. So you can kind of choose a time frame that works best for you. Casey teaches all of our yoga classes and we regularly update the program with new classes every month. You can check out all of our fitness on-demand programs on our website at mamasayfit.com and use code YouTube10 to get 10% off any of our online offerings.